In this part, I'm going to talk about the system architecture, the power management, and the clocks of the SM32U0. So let's start by looking at the system architecture. So this is a typical and classic STM32 architecture. So you have your burst matrix right there in the middle. And then we have two masters on it. So the ARM core, so the ARM Cortex M0 Plus core running up to 56 MHz. And then we have also another like master on this burst matrix. So this is the DMA, so DMA1 and DMA2. And we use DMA MUX for this. So very flexible DMAs that are used in this stm 32 u 0 In terms of slaves, we have the flash memory. So the flash memory has a flash interface, you know, so we call it the ART, so ART. So this is our flash accelerator. So it's basically uh, like a 1K, you know, like uh, of a cache, instruction cache that uh, is available. Then we have also the SRAM, so internal SRAM. So this is the microcontroller. So, you know, you have flash and SRAM embedded. And then all the bus, so the high speed bus right there. And you have your uh, APB bus, so where you have your peripheral bus. Now let's look at the power. So the different power domains and the different voltage, you know, levels needed for these different power domains. Let's start by the analog domain. So powered by VDDA right there and VREF plus. So this is in case, you know, you have a bigger package where VREF plus is available to give you a voltage reference for your DAC and your IDC. Otherwise, you can also use the voltage reference, the internal voltage reference, so VREF buff. And basically your VDDA is going to power, you know, the VDDA uh, block or like analog block. So this is, you know, for all your analog peripherals, like op-amp, comparator, ADC, DAC, and the internal voltage reference, so VREF buffer or VREF buff. For the LCD, you can power it from VLCD, so an external uh, pin, VLCD, external, external power supply. And then you can have also the choice to uh, power it from the LCD booster. So the LCD booster will be powered you know, from VDD and we provide the power for the LCD internally. For VDD, so this is like the main power of the microcontroller, main uh, you know, power supply. So this powers the reset block, the temp sensor, all you know, like the clocks, like the PLL and internal clocks. The IO ring are also you know, powered from VDD. Uh, the voltage regulator that will provide the V-core. So this is also part of the VDD. And then all the standby socket like wake up and also the watchdog. Now let's look at the backup domain. So the backup domain can be powered from VBAT or from VDD. So depending. So if VDD is not present, it will switch basically to VBAT. So this backup domain um, includes the LSE. So that's the external, you know, 32 kilohertz crystal. So the low speed external. And then you have the RTC and the backup registers. So this is the backup domain. Moving on to the V-core domain. So the V-core domain is powered from the voltage regulator. So here, and basically, so it powers the flash, it powers the CPU, the SRAMs and the digital peripherals. Here is the USB domain. So basically this is for the USB transceivers. So it has its own pin, so VDD USB to power it. So what you can do is, you know, according to the spec, we're going to look at the levels, but basically you need a minimum voltage, you know, for it, of 3 volt. So you can have VDD running at 1.8 and your VDD uh, USB at 3 volt to be within the spec. So if we look at the power supplies, uh, so like we said, we have VDD. So the microcontroller is uh, supporting voltages all the way down to 1.71 volts to 3.6 volts for VDDA. So it depends on what peripherals you are using, so analog peripherals. If you are using ADC, for example, and comparator, you can go down to 1.62 volts. If you are using DAC and op -amps, you can go down to 1.8. And if you use the internal voltage reference, it will necessitate at least 2.4 volts. If you don't use any analog peripherals, you can connect VDDA to zero or to VDD. 
Then for VDD USB, so as we are saying, the spec requires a voltage at least 3 volts, so 3 to 4.6. So this is the range that is supported. So this is, you know, to be within the specs, you know, to uh, for the eye diagram, and otherwise you won't pass the certification. Uh, VBAT. So if you are using uh, VBAT, you can connect like a coin cell or a super cap from 1.55 volt to 3.6 volt. If you don't use VBAT, you will connect VBAT to VDD. VLCD. If you use the external VLCD, so plin you will need to provide a voltage from 2.5 to 3.6. You can also use the internally, so you don't have to uh, use you know, the LCD, you will use you know, the LCD booster that is internal and it will provide you know, these voltages, the 2.5 to 3.6. So try not to uh, reduce the VDD as much as you can and this will permit you know, to lower your power consumption. And then you can keep, you know, the analog and the USB at a higher, you know, voltage. Now let's look at the clocks. So internal and external. So the source of the clocks of the stm 2 u 0 So this is a simplified clock tree of the stm 2 u 0 As you can see here on this side, so those are the different uh, clocks. Internal, so HSI, for example, that's internal. HSI 16, that's internal. MSI, internal. HSE external, LSC external, and uh, LSI internal. So that's how it is. You know, you have internal clocks and you have external clocks. Uh, external clock, that means, for example, for the LSC, you can connect like a 32 kilohertz crystal. So if you want to have precise timings for your RTC, otherwise we have the internal clocks. So you have to know that, of course, the internal clocks will have, you know, less precision than using an actual crystal. So an ex uh, external, right? Uh, so in terms of, uh, if we start from the top, HSI 48, so that's our 48 megahertz uh, source. You can use it with CRS, so the clock recovery system, in order to uh, have, for example, the USB that is running. So the USB is what we call crystalless. That means if you use HSI 48 plus the CRS, you can have a USB application running. So you don't need to have an external crystal to have the USB working. Then you have the HSI 16 megahertz, so that's a dedicated 16 megahertz, fixed 16 megahertz clock. MSI, so multiple speed internal, so you can select a speed that you want from 100 kilohertz all the way to 48 megahertz. HSE, so this is where you can connect an external crystal. And then, you know, you have like a clock tree where you can enable some PLLs because, you know, our a microcontroller can run all the way up to 56 megahertz. So basically, uh, so this is uh, 48 and then you can multiply to have like 56 megahertz running. Um, you have some prescalers that can be enabled from 1 to 512. So AHP prescaler and APB prescaler. So this will go then to your peripherals. Uh, for the RTC, so as we said, we can cl uh, clock from the LSI, so this is the internal low speed, or you can uh, connect like a 32 kilox crystal. And then you have the option to use HSE, so that's uh, the main crystal, divided by 42. 